Okay, part two, let's jump in. So what we want to do here is, given a data set, we want to return the mode of that data set. And if there are multiple modes, we want to return the greatest of the modes. So here we have one, two, two, three, three, four, six. So we actually have two modes because two occurs two times and three occurs two times, but I want you to actually return three because three is greater than two. This is going to look very similar to the last solution in the part one video. By the way, if you've not watched the part one video of this, that will help this make a lot more sense. So go check that out, I'll link it below. We are still creating an object of occurrences. Basically what that's doing, again, we're creating an object, we're looping over the input array, and for each number we're saying, if that number does not already exist as a key on the object, create it and set its corresponding value equal to one. Otherwise, if it does already exist as a key on the object, we will increment its corresponding value. So that will create this object of occurrences pattern. And this is a super, super common pattern you'll see all over the place in programming. So let's actually take a look at what that object of occurrences looks like. So that's gonna look like, ignore this three here, that's gonna look like this object here where we have one one, we have two twos, we have two threes, one four, and one six. So how can we take this object and kind of extrapolate from it the modes, the data that we need. Remember, we're looking for the values here. What is the highest value? Well, there are two values here, which are the highest, and those are these twos. So we wanna be able to take those twos corresponding keys and say, okay, three versus two. Is three greater than two? Yes, then we want to return out three at the end. So in order to do that, let me actually take this object here and just so we have a visual reference, let me put it right here. So I have created two variables. I've created a highest value and a variable for the highest values key. So basically these are tracking the highest value we've seen so far while iterating over the object and whatever that value's corresponding key is. Now again, the value, right, the, the number of occurrences of an element can never be lower than zero. So I've initialized to that to, that to zero. And its corresponding key, well, the keys could be anything. The keys could be, uh, let's assume for now that we're working with numbers, these could be negative numbers. So we might have to, let's say for now, we might have to compare negative two, which occurs two times, and three, which occurs two times. So we need to make sure that we are starting out this value as the lowest possible number in JavaScript, which is negative infinity. We are continuously updating it with greater and greater numbers. We have to start it out as the lowest one. So we are again looping over the object. We're breaking out the key, which we have available to us in the for in loop, and the value, which we are just accessing by saying object at that key. Now I'm saying, if the value that we are currently looking at, so let's imagine that we're actually stepping through this object, the key value pair by key value pair, right? So we're looking at the first key value pair, and we are looking at if the value, which is one, is greater than or equal to the highest value, which is the highest value we've seen so far. And yes, it is, one is greater than zero, right? And the key, the current key that we're looking at, which is one, if that, which is a string, we saw in the last video how all keys in objects are converted into strings. So if that number, rather if that string converted back into a number is greater than the highest value key we've seen so far, which is one greater than negative infinity. Yes, it is. So we are going to reassign both of these in this next step here. After step one, we will have something that looks like one, and this will be set to also one. So let's take a look at the next key value pair. So we're looking at this one right here. So 
if the value, which is two, is greater than or equal to the highest value, which is now one. Yes, it is. So that check passes. And the key converted to a number, which the key is a string two, so convert that to a number, it's two. If that is greater than the highest value key we've seen so far, which yes, this is also one. So that also passes the check, right? So we are uh, reassigning both of these. So this now becomes two and this now becomes two as well. Next one, next key value pair, we are looking at string three and two. So if the value, which is two, is greater than or equal to the highest value we've seen so far, yes, it's equal to it. So that passes the check and the key converted to a number. So three is greater than the highest value key we've seen so far, which three is greater than two. So yes, that also passes the check. So we are going to reassign both of these. So this actually stays as two, it's reassigned to two, and this is reassigned to three, and so on and so forth until we get to the very end and it won't have been reassigned again. So it'll actually, these will be the final values here. So the very last thing, Earlier, we saw in the previous video that we needed to convert that key back into a number at this point. In this particular scenario, we have already converted the keys to numbers, so we simply have to return the highest value key, which will give us three for this particular data set here. Okay, so that is how you will get the greatest mode when there are multiple modes in a data set. Any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. Uh, if you thought this was helpful, uh, share it with a friend and uh, let me know what you think. All right, appreciate you watching. Take care.